Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. It is now my rare honor and privilege to call upon the President of the Republic of Zambia and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Force, Mr. Hagainde Hitchlema, to address ourselves. Mr. President. You may take your seats, please. Thank you very much. Please take your seats. Let me acknowledge the presence of the minister, ministers of um, technology and science, minister of education, but also the cabinet colleagues who are here. I see a number of them over that table. Thank you for being present today. Your Excellency, the Chinese ambassador to Zambia and deputy secretary to the cabinet, permanent secretaries that are here and colleagues from uh, State House. I'm aware that there are other government colleagues that are in these premises today. Let me acknowledge the Managing Director, Huawei Technologies Southern Africa, who has spoken as the Ambassador did and the two Ministers here, those that are seated with me in front, and thank you for your uh, deliveries, the four of you. I also wish to recognize other senior staff from Huawei and recipients of today's prizes, so to say, the innovators, those that we've seen standing from different colleges, different institutions, and at the same time, by and large, our youth, our youth, Vayufi, Vayufi, distinguished invited guests, and of course, members of the press, our colleagues from the press, we always appreciate you because you make it possible for others who are not present to be aware of what's going on here and for them to benefit from um, an activity like the one we are witnessing today. Shall I say, ladies and gentlemen, first, it's my duty to welcome you to State House, all of you, to your State House, people's State House. I just work here, and the notion that State House belongs to the President and those who work around here is incorrect. State House belongs to the people of Zambia, and we happen to be the ones working from here at this stage. So you welcome to your State House. That includes the visitors who may be here. I am very delighted, we're very delighted to officiate at this auspicious occasion to award 50 young people, young innovators, as the first ever recipients of the Hagain de Hichilema Innovation Fund. First recipient. This is history being written, and no one can rub it off going forward. Some may ignore it, but no one can rub it off. So, great, great, great occasion indeed. To me, my heart is really, really, if you like, beaming with pleasure. 
we are witnessing an amazing work from young people being recognized and celebrated who are the ones we're celebrating the young people of Zambia and we always say imitikula empang but the truth is that you are the leaders of today young people you are the leaders of tomorrow what you are doing your innovative work your research r and d research and development in this case your research component provides strong strong outcomes that are essential to any society's well-being so you can't be the leaders of tomorrow yes you are but you are leaders of today and today is an example of what we've been saying about you being leaders today it's a question of providing leadership in which sphere which area which space you're doing it in this space well done well done There is no doubt that the role of innovation, as I've hinted already, is critical to our agenda as a nation to achieve our desired middle prosperous income status. I was in Qatar together with a couple of ministers and others not long ago and we were attending amongst other things we were doing and the minister of technology was there what was the education there no technology was there finance was there foreign affairs of course who is a constant in these things <laughs> and we were attending a meeting of the un least developed countries and when I looked around who was present there, I asked my colleagues, where is President X? He says, no, no, no. They graduated. They are no longer in this category of least developed countries. So I said to my few colleagues that I was seated with, I don't want to come back to this conference again. <laughs> I don't belong here. This country does not belong in the category of least developed countries. We have been there for too long. We have not exploited our assets, our endowments, including the young talent like these that we are awarding today. We, we have not exploited them. When I say exploitation, it's not in a negative connotation, but we have not utilized this talent problem. And I said to my colleagues, we shouldn't be here. We should have been in a meeting that took place in Indonesia not long ago. Some of you know which meeting took place not long ago in Indonesia. We should be in a meeting coming up in India. The message is clear. This leadership wants to work with the young people fresh, unpolluted minds, pure minds. I know when I was young, their age, my focus was getting through with school and doing well in school. That was my focus. The mind is pure then, at that time, as they are. And that's when the mind can deliver its intended objectives together, bonded with a national objective. Our national objective, amongst many, as you know, is to accelerate economic development so we can provide for the weak, the sick, the old, the retired, the different variables, the disadvantaged in society, only through economic success. And I've said to many colleagues on the continent when we meet that can we change 
the narrative of our meetings, the agendas of our meetings, and do less politics and do more of issues around economic advancement, technology, investment, bringing the young people, and discuss learning from each other, investing together. That's a push I'm having on the African leadership table. And in the one year, six months we've been in office, pretty well my colleagues who I found in the presidencies are aware that this is my agenda, this is our agenda. But it's your agenda, it's the Zambia's agenda. It's Sadiq's agenda. It is Africa's agenda, it's a global agenda. So I am emphasizing this issue so the nation can see the value of today, what's happening here today. And that it is what's happening today here that will take us out of the least developed countries conferences. Next year I'll find an excuse why not to attend if we have not graduated. I'm serious. With all that God gave us, first human capital, natural resources, endowment, water, fresh water, minerals, good soils. It's reckoned that our Mpongwe soils globally, the quality of those soils, Minister of Agriculture, are only second to Ukraine. And Ukraine is providing so much grain to the world. Why can't Mpongwe do that? Innovation. I'm glad you are here, sir. Comprehensive agricultural support program. We must embrace it. For that to work to increase our productivity from less than two tons a hectare of maize to take it to five, six, ten hectares, we need innovation. And I'm glad to see here your excellence and Huawei and the Minister of Technology and Education that one of these innovators is working on irrigation technology. Irrigation, amongst other things, of course, we have to do water harvesting, investment in infrastructure. Your Excellency, we would like to work with China on these issues. I do watch myself. I'm a perpetual student. I see how China has changed that country to better the lives of its people. We have a lot to learn. We would like to learn. Part of what China has done is to harvest its resources properly using technology. And then irrigation for us, Minister of Agriculture. Irrigation is crucial. So let's nurse this talent. Let's nurse this talent. Let's grow it. So we can graduate, I'm saying it for the third time, from the LDC category. I connect. We commend, congratulate the Minister of Technology, Science, Minister of Education, National Technology Business Center, Huawei Technologies, Embassy, Your Excellence, other partners for this initiative to come to being what it is today. Work, a lot of work was being done behind the scenes. We appreciate that work. We appreciate that work as a nation. The Minister of Education touched how emotive this president is, this cabinet is, this government is about the importance of education. It's an emotional attachment. We had to deliver free education against all odds in order to walk the talk. We had to deliver free education against the views of many who said that we were jokers and that there was no money. And our answer then was that resources are always scarce. That's the first course you do if you're an economics business student. Resources are scarce. The question is, how you utilize their scarce resources. Where do you place them? 
what do you hold dear? Education is the one. And hence free education. Not by chance, but by a well thought out analytical approach to what matters best in a society and in the economy. And the Minister of Education referred to the story of China, the story of South Korea. It's no different from the story of Singapore. It's no different from the story of Norway. In my early days in politics, I did scan. I went to China. Your Excellency, you may not be aware. I went to China. At that time, I don't know how it worked that the Chinese government was able to allow an opposition leader to take a visit supported by the Chinese government. A lot of noise was made. But one of the things I do always to learn, I went to a place called Guangzhou. I went to Hanzhou. I went to Xi'an. I went to Shanghai. I went to Beijing during that tour. And I looked down and I said, we are jokers back home. We just chalk us back home. And I'm serious. We're not serious. We have not been serious as a country. All of us are, are palpable. Years later, I went to a place just out of Shanghai, which used to be paddy fields. I have spoken, spoken to the ambassador about that issue. Years later, I went back there, and I couldn't recognize what I saw earlier as paddy fields. It was a different place. Fantastic airport out of Shanghai. Just a different place. Innovation, technology, hard work. So, excellence, Zambia and China have a long history of friendship. Let's continue with that history. Let's continue with that history. Let's not be distracted by other extraneous issues. I've said to you before, this new Dawn government will walk the path of Chairman Mao and KK, Kenneth Kahn. That's how they were able to bring the Tazara railway line when it was not conceivable to do that. And when we went to the Chinese museum in Chong, as I said, I'm a perpetual student myself. I was following the video how the, the line was constructed through difficult terrain with limited technology there. Kono in today's Zambia, why should we not upgrade that rail line given the technology, given the willingness, and the relationship that we have. I don't want to veer off from today's value, but I'm sending a message. I'm sending a message, Your Excellence, that let's continue walking that path of Kenneth Kaunda and Chairman Mao. And we will do greater things today, together. We will do greater things together. In our custom, Your Excellency, rain is a blessing. I went to Kitwe, it was boring last week. I go to Jingola, it was pouring. Mufrila, it was pouring. Mbala, it was pouring. Good luck. We need the rain. <laughs> Minister of Education, the skills training component of CDF is part of the story of valuing education. Absolutely. 
as part of the story. Other interventions that this government is making to support education, to support technology. Minister of Technology is aware when we were in Qatar, connecting fiber optic investment, Zambia connecting through to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, to the Indian Ocean in the east, Indian Ocean in the south, and north is deliberate, is to support, to create the infrastructure to allow technology, to allow applications, to allow of course, software, to allow innovation to be easy and possible. Minister of Education and the young people here, colleagues who are away, this government is committed to accelerating the review of the curricula. I didn't say curriculum, I said curricula. So we are looking at an early age curricula that includes values and principles to our young people. Democracy. That includes financial literacy. That includes entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. What else? That includes technology. So we need to accelerate that work. Bangu Wangu. Minister, you have our support. The two ministers must work together, education, technology, to get to work on the curricula. Once we do that, we'll make it easier for these young guys by the time they're in grade 12, they will have picked up a lot of skills that they need to do what they've done, which brought us here today. That's a connection. And then the country will derive value. And we can graduate from that category, which I don't want to go back to. That entails growth, economic growth. That entails jobs. That entails business opportunities. Once more, we congratulate the recipients today of this award, the Hagai Ndesh Lema Innovation Fund Award. And this is only the beginning. You are being awarded $1,000 each. Honestly, when I was at your age to access $1,000, <laughs> it was a mission impossible, never to be realized. But here you are. $1,000 is a lot of money, to be honest. And since you are innovators, innovate with this $1,000. You can grow it. I'm serious. You can grow it. You can grow it. I have a basic principle in life. At a certain age in life, consume less. Consume what is called consumption expenditure, less, and focus on investment expenditure. Since you are innovators, I'll be mischievous. Your $1,000 is your why? Mm, income. So my message here is that that $1,000, which is your why, consume on wastage less, which is C. Then you will have an equal sign giving you S, which is savings. Then you have another sign, since you are innovators like this, not equal, like this, which is equivalent to I. I is investment. So it is Y minus C, Y is income, minus C consumption is equal to S savings 
equivalent to I, which is investment. When you do that at this age, it will give you more and a bigger why, and you have a vicious cycle of income through investment and reinvestment, and eventually you have a lot to consume on your needs. But if you reduce S by increasing C, you save less because you have chewed more, then you have very little opportunities to grow yourself as an entrepreneur. It's as simple as that. There's no magic, there's no witchcraft. This is it. The country works the same. Companies work in the same way. That's why they invest and reinvest, because they save. Alanda Pafla. These prototypes, you're looking at areas of agriculture, I talked about health, education, transport, logistics, finance, and etc., etc. These prototypes should be secured through intellectual property, Minister of Technology, and Education. I guess commerce will get involved in here. Can we secure the innovations of these young people? through intellectual property rights. Let's support them. We should support them. The government should support these young people in achieving that. But what else should we help these young people? We should help them in commercializing. Once we're out of the laboratory, I use that terminology generically. Let's drift now to commercialization so we can deliver more why for these young people. By commercializing their innovations, it means we can sell them as products now. And these young colleagues will earn more revenue, who will grow their why. So we will give you that support. I wish to conclude by thanking Huawei again for fulfilling your pledge. Minister, we were here, isn't it? We were in status, right in status. When this idea was mooted, right here, but in the cabinet room there. So today we are here to award prizes. Thank you, Huawei Technologies. <laughs> this is how things work, they are planned. They just don't drop from anywhere. They are planned. Please, young people, do less, spend less time on gambling. These things, what do they call them now? Huh? All are better, or whatever it is. <laughs> spend more time on what you are doing than looking for luck. Luck comes because you've worked hard. We want to thank the staff, ministers, PSCs, staff in the Ministry of Technology, Ministry of Education, other ministries, departments, for your efforts to us today. Private sector, because Huawei is part of business, we want to thank others and truly we want to invite other private sector businesses to emulate the Huawei, Huawei exam. I've been working hard to pronounce your company name properly. <laughs> Huawei. Huawei. Let's emulate Huawei. The ambassador was telling me in Chinese pouch it's important to learn the pronunciations. So I've been working hard from the time he told me that. But I also told him that the Huawei chief executive can simply call me HH. It's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So we ask other businesses to emulate Huawei's approach to investing in talent in their young people. And I think we as a government 
must be encouraged across the spectrum of government. My last words is to say, education is the best investment. Best equalizer. I came from the village. I don't think my mother and father ever thought a village boy can become a president of Zambia. Never. But the only thing I received was education. Nothing else. So education is the best investment. It's the best inheritance. I tell my kids, you want to inherit a ranch, you may not be able to run it without education. Go to school first. I'm serious. So it's the best equalizer. The child from an orphan family will be one of these innovators today. I believe one of these innovators comes from a family where there's a single mother, single parent. I have no doubt about that. Comes from different backgrounds. It does not matter. Once you have all received this asset called education. So I want to encourage the young people of Zambia to look at education in these three components. Investment, inheritance, equalizer. This government will continue putting more money in education. Whatever the challenges we have in our treasury envelope, Minister of Finance, sir, we will continue putting more money in education because that's the right thing to do. I thank you for your attention. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.